Hello everyone! Welcome to the very first episode of the Bluegrass Spinner Podcast. Um, I'm sure as you can guess from my the podcast name, I am coming from to you from the Bluegrass State. Um, and I don't know if you can tell out the window, but it is a gray, very cold day. <laughs> Hence the reason for my jacket today. Um, because it is really cold. <laughs> and it's supposed to get colder. But anyway, you guys don't care about the weather. I, my name is Christy. Uh, you can find me on Ravelry and Instagram and YouTube as Cronit Girl. Um, also you can uh, always join our Ravelry group uh, at, called Bluegrass Spinner Podcast. Um, uh, we're going to be having lots of fun things going on, uh, like knit alongs, craft alongs, spin alongs, um, you name it, we're going to do it. Anyways, I am doing this podcast, uh, one, because of course I thought it would be a lot of fun. Um, I love the fiber community, um, and everything that it's all about, um, and also, I thought that this would be a great motivator for me as well to get my gazillion whips that I currently have completed, as well as my fleeces that are building up completed. <laughs> um, and so I thought that would be really fun to have this podcast be a process of it. Um, jump right into it. Um, I, like I said, I have lots of whips. But I'm only going to be showing you guys a handful of them at a time because I'm only going to be working on a handful of them at one time so I can get them completed. Um, I have a terrible habit of getting probably about 80% of the way through a project and then I get bored with it. My ADD kicks in and I'm like, I'm done with this. I want something new and interesting. Um, I really got to stop that habit. So, the... First project I want to show you is the Vacation Pie Shawl. I'm going to try to hold this up without having it come completely apart. As you can see, it's a basic classic pie shawl right now. I only just started on probably about 20 rows in or so. I'm not very far. Um, because I cast this on right after Christmas, and I shouldn't have, but what am I going to do? <laughs> I got to add, you know? Um, and it is, I'm working on it out of All for Love of Yarn. I'm not sure how well you can see that. Hopefully you can see it okay. It is out of their Sumptuosity lace space. Um, and it is 70% baby alpaca, 20% silk, and 10% cashmere. So it is a lovely, lovely yarn. And the colorway is warm yellow. I am a yellow person. I know a lot of people don't like yellow, but I love yellow. Um, I love happy, bright summery spring colors um I, they just they just make me happy and i like to be happy um but this shawl i started it for a few reasons one i wanted something new to get to work on but also uh with it being a lace yarn i wanted to uh practice knitting with some lace yarn in a lace pattern um, because I do have some hand spun lace that I will cast on this year. Uh, it is one of my New Year's goals um, because I thought you know with this I can practice with it and you know make sure that I'm able to do it properly um, before I actually work on my precious hands, but 
So, that being said, uh, it is a it is a pretty basic pattern. Um, I'm not giving you anything away, so because it is a free pattern on Ravelry. But it starts out as a basic pie shawl, which basically uh, every um, set, every group of rows, you double. So it doubles in size. Um, like it goes from 2, 4, 8, 16, um, and, uh, and then it grows that way. And then it grows, it, and then you start a lace section, and then you put on a lace border. So, um, so right now it's just basic stocking up for the most part, but it will get into a lace, and, um, and hopefully it will teach me a lot and prepare me to comfortably knit with my hand spun. Um, also, I am working on a w very fun pattern, and it's a wonderful pattern by K.F. Jones. You all might know her from the Bakery Bears podcast. I love that podcast, <laughs> but I'm sure everybody else does too. It's a wonderful podcast. Her and her husband are just adorable. And it's just so much fun. I look forward to every one of them. Um, but I am working on her Miss Giletto Giraffe. And right now all I have are the legs, the arms, and still working on the tail. I gotta still put on the fringe on the tail. But um, I did make the tail shorter than called for just because I got really tired of working on it but it's an okay length it's okay that's probably the only modification that I'll be making um, but then I'll just make the fringe a little bit longer um, maybe we'll see but it is being spun uh, spun I'm sorry guys <laughs> it is being knitted uh, on gnome anchors yarn this is actually the first yarn that I've knitted of hers, and it's wonderful, you guys. Oh my gosh, I love it. Um, it's in her squishy gnome base in the Aurora Nomalis colorway. And I'll go ahead and show it to you guys. Hopefully it comes up, because there's a lot of crazy colors going on in this. Um, it's showing up pretty good, actually. Uh, as you can see, there's some teals and greens and uh, pinks and whites and uh, whiny purples and uh, some browns. and it, there, There's just a whole different slew of colors going on. And it's beautiful. I love it, you guys. Um, and it's so squishy. It's out of... Uh, I can't even remember... It's 100% super, super wash merino, so of course it's going to be soft, um, but it's just, it's so springy. I love it. Um, sorry guys, <laughs> you might see a little blip in the video. Um, I unfortunately left one of my projects um, out in the car and I had to go get it. <laughs> um, I promise on future podcasts I will be more prepared in that sense. Just saying. Um, my next project that I wanted to show you all is actually my second pair of socks. Um, I'm hoping that this pair of socks will fit better than my first pair. For my first pair, I did the Hermione's sock pattern, which is a wonderful pattern. If you haven't knitted it yet, you should. Um, it's a lot of fun. It keeps your interest, but at the same time, it's very easy uh, travel sock knitting. Um, you, you memorize the pattern very quickly. Um, so no fault of the pattern, just the fault of my funky feet, y'all. Um, I got some really funky feet. <laughs> Like, you all care about that. <laughs> but seriously, I if anybody else has, you know, um, the same issues as I do, I would love to hear what you all do for your sock knitting. I have extra long feet and a very high arch with a heel that protrudes out. It's just, 
Does anybody else have really extreme high arches? And how, if you do, what type of sock do you knit? What type of heel do you use? Do you, you know, do you do any increases or decreases throughout the foot? I would love to know. Um, until then, <laughs> I'm just doing a vanilla sock pattern. Hold on. It is, oh my gosh, what is going on here? Okay. Sorry, you guys. Sometimes my magic loop gets tangled in my yarn and then it's a mess. Um, it is just a plain old vanilla sock and uh, I'm just doing an afterthought forethought heel. You can see my waist yarn there. I'm not a brave enough knitter to actually cut my yarn and pick up stitches. Uh, so I I will be always be doing the waist yarn. Um, and I'm hoping that this will work better on my foot uh, than the Hermione's did, but we will see. Um, I'm hoping that having like a little pocket to fit in my foot, to put my foot in, will kind of help for my heel issue and all. Um, so that's, I, so all you all can see that this is Christmas beauty yarn, right? It is the um, Fiber Nymph from Dye Works Bedazzled Base. It's out of 75% Superwash Merino, 20% Nylon, and 5% Stellina in the Merry and Bright colorway. Hopefully it focuses. Um, I love her yarn, y'all. I... I'll tell you what, I have so much gotten into Indie Diary yarn um, because, you know, in order for them to, to survive, they have to make a good product. And they make a wonderful product, many of them, uh, I have discovered. Um, and, you know, Christmas base, right? I cast these on before Christmas. Of course, I didn't finish them. So then I was like, okay, I definitely want to finish these socks by... Uh, the end of the year. I'm still working on my very first sock. I, <laughs> that's how bad I am at finishing projects, you all. Um, so, uh, I have made a new goal of finishing these socks by the end of January. And I will finish them by the end of January. I was actually, last night, when I was working on these, I actually knitted all that. Uh, you can see my little stitch marker there. Isn't she cute? It's a little angel. I love her. I forget where I got these from. Um, I think I just got off of somebody from eBay. Um, but, so, I do plan on finishing them by the end of the year, or at the, at the end of the year, <laughs> at the end of the month, or at the very least, get both socks knitted and just have to do the heels. I would be happy with that as well. Um, cause I'm starting to get tired of knitting on these and I definitely don't want to start getting second socked syndrome. Um, so that is that. And like I said, that's just a vanilla sock. If you all are interested in the, you know, my construction of it, you can find it in my projects page on my Ravelry page because um, I am keeping notes on there of how many rows of stocking that I'm doing, how many rows of ribbing and that type of info. Um, that is all of my work in progress that I'm heavily working on right now. Um, I will be bringing out more projects as I pick them up, um, but I'm making a rule for myself that I cannot pick up another project until I finish one that I'm working on. Um, so that I get my projects done. Uh, and I'm really being strict with those rules for myself. And as far as casting on more, I would like to see myself get down to about five projects before I cast on anything new. Now that may change, because sometimes things come up, like... Um, 
I may ch make an exception for that because um, I have a cousin who's expecting a baby so I may want to cast on a blanket or something like that for the little one. Um, you know little things like that I'll, I'll bend the rule for but other than that I am I'm, I'm gonna be strict with myself. I have to be because um, it has really gotten out of hand. I, I can't manage it all. <laughs> um, as far as crochet projects are going, I do have one that I'm currently really strongly working on. It is, I'll tell you what y'all, three year olds and it, knitting projects do not make a good mix. I was working on a hat out of this yarn for my daughter and she I stepped out of the room for literally five seconds and I came back into the room and she had gotten to the project and raped half of the needle half of the stitches off the needles and I was right in the middle of the ribbing so I was like there's no way I can pick these back up no way <laughs> so I have decided instead of doing a hat <laughs> because I was I, I wasn't really enjoying the hat anyway I was like eh, she already has a hat and I'm not really enjoying working on this. And I, you know, time is too short to not enjoy what you're working on. Now granted, I'm not completely enjoying this either because it's a very boring item. But I am, hold on, oh my gosh, it's, I am working on just a basic, very, very basic scarf. And I gotta hurry and get this completed because every single day my daughter is asking me, is my scarf ready? Is my scarf ready? No, not yet. <laughs> so I gotta finish this, y'all. I'm about three quarters of the way through. My goal is to use all of the yarn. Um, but I have this much left of it. I still have quite a bit. So... I don't know if I'm going to use all of the yarn. And it's just a basic pattern. It, all I did was I think I cast on 35 stitches. And. Or cast on. I think I chained 35. And then I just started doing. Uh, double crochet. And I'm just doing double crochet. Double crochet. Um, so there's no. I didn't get a pattern or anything like that. It's just something that I just made up. And really simple. And. What I thought would be quick, but it's not going as quick as I thought it would. Um, the yarn is by Yarn Pirate. I love their yoga. It's fun. Um, it is their Superwash Merino Tensile Base um, in the All Chemi colorway. I'll show you again. I don't know if you can read that. But... Um, I got it on discount. I've never in their shop. I've never um, knitted with their stuff before or anything like that. The colors are fun and everything else. Uh, I just don't think I would purchase this particular yarn base from them again because it's very splitty. And I think that's one of the issues that I'm having working with it is that I'll work with it and it's unwinding itself. Um, so it's more difficult to work with. Um, but the colors are wonderful and my daughter loves the color. So, uh, so that should be hopefully completed by the end of the week. And it, cause I'm, I'm going to really dig down on that and it, get it done. It's, it's almost a heck it could probably technically be done now, but I want her to be able to wear it for a few years. Um, so I want to have it be a little bit longer than what it is currently. Um, now on to my favorite part, spinning! I love spinning, y'all. I started spinning in, um, uh, May of 2014. 
so I'm a relatively new spinner in the sense of time, but I have caught on so quickly. Um, I I am addicted, y'all. Um, I am a fiber holic. I'm telling you right now, I'm a fiber holic. I have, I mean, in that short period of time, I mean, what has it been, like six, seven months? I've purchased three fleeces and loads and loads of uh, fiber that I don't even know if I'll be able to spin it all. <laughs> and I still keep collecting more. I, I love the look of fiber and I love spinning fiber. It is without a doubt the most enjoyable experience for me. Um, I purchased a used spinning wheel at a fiber uh, show that we have here locally uh, and from a wonderful lady um, she was very very nice and she was helpful and uh, she had lots of information for me um, and she even gave me a, a free grab bag of different test fibers that I could you know because she knew that when I got home with the spinning wheel I'd want to spin it with something so she was she was very lovely um but i did get a, a ashford kiwi the original version they have a kiwi too now but and i love the spinning wheel and it is uh but it's not my dream spinning wheel i'm currently trying trying to save up for uh my dream spinning wheel which is the Kromsky Symphony, but needless to say, I will be keeping this spinning wheel because uh, if my daughter ever gets interested in spinning, um, I'm also going to be using it for my travel wheel because if it gets a little bit banged up, I don't care. Um, you know, it's it's my rugged wheel. <laughs> I'll be considering it as because my symphony will stay home. And my daughter will not be able to touch it <laughs> if and when she starts spinning or gets an interest. Right now she enjoys sitting in my lap and holding the fiber for me um, as I draft and treadle. Um, she can't quite sit in the chair and treadle at the same time. Her, her legs aren't long enough for that. Um, as I know a lot of... Uh, spinners who are parents let their kids do the trendling for them. She can't do it yet, um, but she does like to help me in any way that she can. And right now a three-year-old can help me by just holding the fiber. <laughs> so, um, but she enjoys that. She thinks that she's doing it or she'll put her other hand on my drafting hand and she'll, you know, hold my hand while I'm doing that. So it's really cute. Um, and I'm happy that she, she wants to help. She, she does. She's very sweet. Um, sorry, y'all. I'm looking at my wheel. It's sitting, like, right here in front of me. <laughs> so I'm looking at my wheel while I'm talking about it. Anyways, right now, I am working on... I, I, per, I, I traded for this fleece um, back in October. No. It was November. I traded for it in November. Um, and I didn't know anything about purchasing fleece or anything like that at the time. But I knew I wanted, I had a strong, very strong interest in processing my own fleece. So I have, so this lady came in to my spinning guild and she had some fleeces available and she, she liked a fiber that I had dyed, so uh, she was like, would you be willing to do a trade? I said, sure, I'll do that. This should have been the first hint that she was willing to trade an entire uh, three pound fleece um, for a what I had marked at a $20 braid um, a fiber. But it did serve its purpose. I wasn't expecting the greatest. Um, 
but I I wanted to get it because when I did purchase a fleece that I was highly interested in and you know I really wanted to do well on I would be prepared uh, on the process so it did serve its purpose on teaching me um, how to clean, how to calm, how to, you know, it taught me all of that. Um, and I learned a lot from that fleece in that process. Um, I didn't felt any of it or anything like that. I didn't have any of the issues I thought that I would. The issues that I had was that the fleece was a mess. <laughs> It was a mess to say the least. I'm not going to go into great detail, but it was a mess. It was hard to determine the parts that were like the the underbelly and the neck and that area to the blanket part of the fleece. It was that difficult. It was just one large mess. But needless to say, I ended up processing about half of it. Um, before I threw the rest out. I was like, I'm done. I'm done doing this because I'm not going to sit here and not enjoy something that I'm spending so much time and energy on. It's just, it's not worth it. Life is too short. My crafting time is too short. I'm not doing it. But I did start. Oh my gosh, where did it go? I can't find the, the end, y'all, so, um, to show you, so I'll just scoot up. Here is the first two ounces, uh, spun up. I hand combed it, and then I am currently working on the second two ounces. There's some combed. It's, a um, it's a creamy, uh, fleece and it's it's kind of soft we'll see what the end result is it was a lamb fleece it was a Wensleydale Shetland lamb fleece so it has some softness and some coarseness to it so we'll see what the end result is like um, I am hoping to have the second two ounces spun and um, get it plied by Sunday of this week uh, and today's Tuesday so it should be doable um, I got about one ounce comb so far, so I still have about another ounce to comb, and then I can get started on the spinning of it. Um, and when I start spinning, I get through spinning real quickly. It's My spinning is the complete opposite of my knitting and crocheting. I, when I start a project, a spinning braid, I... I want to get done. I want to get that end result. I want to see what would... I've, I've made with my hands um, so that should be done fairly quickly when I finish that I plan on starting I got eight ounces of this I ended up buying a second four ounces it's the into the world December club flounce colorway it is BFL and silk BFL is so far from what all the all the uh, fibers that I've worked with, BFL hands down is my favorite thus far. Um, it is a dream to sp to sp draft to to work with, and the end result when I spun my first BFL braid, I was like, oh my god! I was like, and I watched it and I've I felt it after it dried and I was like. This is wonderful. <laughs> I never thought BFL felt that good. I never knitted with it or anything before. So, um, it is, so I'm very much looking forward to getting this started. My plan for it is to just, uh, spin this four ounces on one bobbin, spin my other four ounces on a second bobbin, and ply them together. Um, I don't know what weight the end result will be or anything like that. Um, because when I spin, I kind of let the yarn tell me what it wants to be. Does it want to be a lace or does it want to be a worsted weight? 
um, I just kind of let it do its thing and tell me what, what it wants to be. Um, but usually from my experience when I've been with BFL, and that's BFL and Silk, so it'll probably come out a little bit finer. Um, it tends to be roughly a fingering weight. Um, that's usually what, when I spin BFL, it wants to be. And then after I get the yardage and everything, well, I'll decide what I want it to be. Um, I am very much not a predeterminer of my spinning projects. Uh, now, I do tend to kind of decide, okay, this fiber, I have a goal of having it be a hat and mitts, or I want this to be a shawl. But I don't pick a specific pattern or specific yardage or weight. I just have a genre that I want that hand spun to hopefully become. It doesn't always work out that way, but that's that's the type of goal that I set for each spinning project that I do. Um, so I cannot wait till I get that started. Uh, I only spin one project at a time um, because I I like to get that end result for my spinning. Now it's kind of odd because I am very much a process spinner. I don't necessarily have to knit with my hand spun. I just enjoy the process of spinning but at the same time I want to see that end result. So I guess I'm a mixture of both process and product spinning. Um, I don't have any finished spinning projects to show right now because I um, I haven't had any in the real close uh, time period right now t that I finished because um, I you know I was working so much on um, my Christmas knitting for the holidays so my spinning kind of slowed down but um, and now I'm working on the fleece. So that's taking more time than, you know, spinning usually does for me. I can usually spin four ounces if it's a good braid within about two days. Because <laughs> when I sit down and do it, I really go to town on it. Um, and I'm also going to be, I've been working on processing a Cormo fleece and then I will start on my Sex and Merino fleece. I ha I purchased a beautiful naturally colored Sex and Merino. Um, she was a, uh, it is a lamb fleece so it's, you know, even softer. Um, but she was a beautiful uh, black, gray, white, uh, so I, I'm looking forward to spinning that one um, and getting working on that. And I'll show you all um, more of that as time goes on. Uh, if you would, which brings me to the next topic. You know, this podcast, I want it to be as enjoyable for you all as it is for me. So if you want to see something in my podcast, or if you see something and it, you know, you're like, hey, you know, I don't really care about that, uh, then let me know, um, because I want you all to enjoy it. I'm doing this for you all, as, I mean, I'm doing it for me too, but, you know, I, what's the point in doing a podcast if, um, if it's, if it's not for the people who watch it, um, you know, I am wanting to show you all my process of cleaning the fleece and combing and everything else um, and teaching you all how to do it and my experiences from, you know, things that have worked and things that haven't worked. Um, and so that when, it, when and if you guys, you know, purchase your own fleeces, if that's something you're interested in, you know, you'll, you'll have kind of a good list of, you know, trial and error already that, um, that I've been having to work through myself. Um, you know, because I've done lots of research on the internet and everything else, and, you know, there are tips, but, you 
you know, I, I, I've done some of the things and it's like, what are these people talking about? It, that doesn't work. <laughs> you know? So, I really want to give good information. Um, and I can include that in my episodes if you all would like. Or I can include it into a side note to my episodes. You all let me know what you would like. Um, I do plan on putting um, some processing. I'm, I'm work, Like I said, I'm working on my Cormo right now. I am planning on putting in some of my processing uh, of that in a side note to this podcast. So... But if you want it in the actual episode of the podcast, uh, like at the end, um, let me know. And I'll be more than happy to do that so you all don't have to open up two videos or or whatever. Um, but that's my plan. And uh, so I would love to get feedback from you guys. Also, feedback on, you know, technical stuff. I'm not a super techie person. I am a photographer. Um, so, you know, I, I do, you know, know a little bit about light and stuff like that, but I know nothing about videography. Um, so if there's something with the audio that, you know, isn't right to you guys, or the lighting, or, you know, you want a different position or a different view, let me know, and, um, and so I could try to work on that, um. Because I really want this to be a very informational and enjoyable um, and fun podcast for you guys. Um, so, uh, and th this is going to be a, uh, I'm going to be filming every two weeks. I'm not certain on the specific day. I'm sure that will kind of, I'll figure that out as time goes on, um, what day works best for me, but I will be filming every two weeks for you all. Um, I don't think I would get enough done for me to film every week and have it be enjoyable for you guys. There just wouldn't be enough change, um, and enough updates. So every two weeks, uh, I'll be filming and, um, and like I said before, we're going to have lots of giveaways and knit-alongs and spin-alongs. And, you know, if if uh, you're a knitter and, you know, we're kind of interested in spinning or enjoy hand spuns, um, you know, hopefully this podcast will get you to motivated to, to take the leap and uh, and join in the wonderful experience. It's very, it's a very zen-like experience. It's very relaxing. I've... <laughs> You all will laugh, and I laugh too. Um, you know, I've been known to almost kind of doze when I'm spinning because it's it's so relaxing of an experience. So I hope you all have had a wonderful new year because it is very close to the new year. Um, and I hope you all have a wonderful two weeks and hope you all enjoyed this podcast and join the group and let me know what you all uh think and um let me know a little bit about you guys how you know how long have you guys been in the crafts and um where are you from i love hearing that stuff 